Uh, Paulson uh, Kunyunyu will be handling this subject today. Shall we look to the Lord for the blessing of this session that the Lord may give the much needed grace and wisdom to Brother Paulson to rightly divide God's word. And may our almighty God speak to each one of us uh, through his spirit. So shall we look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank thee for enabling us to gather together in thy presence today. Thou art our God, who is our creator, our redeemer, our strength, and our refuge. We acknowledge thy sovereignty in our lives. O oh, Father, it is our privilege as thy children to call thee Abba Father and come boldly to thy presence. Thou art our heavenly Father who loves and cares for us. The love, the depth of that love, we can never understand. But thank the Lord for bringing us all together on this platform. We thank thee for the initiative of the TERC. We praise thee for the vision behind this venture. We praise thee Lord for all the dear brethren involved in this venture that has made it possible for all of us in various countries to sit at thy feet, to study thy word together. As the Sammy says, how sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Thy word gives us strength and edification. We pray that thou would open the eyes of our heart that we may behold the wondrous things from thy word. Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom. We pray that thou would reveal to us the deep truths of thy word through thy spirit, that we might know thee better and love thee more and be conformed to the image of thy son. And in our hearts may we revere the Lord and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope that we have. We pray, Father, for all the teaching faculty. Today, especially, we pray for Brother Paulson, that thou would give him the needed grace and wisdom to rightly divide thy word. And may we earnestly listen to thy word being proclaimed here today and uh, to receive thy word with a willing heart and to obey thy word and follow thy precept diligently. Enable us to live our lives in this pilgrim journey for thy glory alone. And bless their dear ones handling the technical and various logistical support for this ministry. We pray, Father, that thou would work out everything so wonderfully according to thy perfect will. And may we, may, may we rejoice in thee and in the study of thy word. Help us to live righteous and godly lives in, the, in this present age. The great expectation of our Lord's return is what gives us the blessed hope in this wretched world. May our lives be ordered so that we'll continue to do the work that thou hast interested us to do and be ready for thy coming. We sit as empty vessels, Father, that thou would fill us with thy word and guide us through thy spirit. We give you all the glory and honor and all the praises due unto thy name. And thank you for hearing our prayer as we ask this prayer in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may I hand over the session to Brother Paulson. Uh, and the subject is the Pauline Epistles. Good morning and uh, loving greetings to all of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, on the day of the uh, inaugural uh, function, uh, I had to race through uh, the, uh, the epistles uh, written by Paul. Um, uh, which actually I would say uh, it has been commended by scholars in thousands of uh, pages. So today we will be literally considering uh, the things that uh, we were trying to look at uh, on that day. Today I am uh, trying to cover five uh, things, five topics, and um, I request all of you to pay undivided attention. Uh, so that uh, these uh, fundamental basic things that we are trying to understand will be useful to us in the uh, study of the Pauline epistles in the uh, coming days. Um, I have uh, five things before me. One is I want to introduce you to the geographical locations of the places that are referred uh, in the Pauline epistles. Um, we will see the specific map that is used for the uh, third missionary journey, and also uh, the voyage to Rome, 
And this will help us to have a broad idea about the places uh, which are referred in the Pauline epistles. And the second uh, purpose that I have is to give you a broad outline of Paul's life. Uh, Paul's uh, life as described in the scripture, we know something about him, but uh, even from the extra biblical records, whatever reliable information we have, uh, I have tried to put it together so that we will have a broad idea about the uh, life of Apostle Paul. And then uh, the third uh, purpose is to introduce these epistles in relation to Paul's life. Uh, which we had done briefly on the first day, uh, but we will do it little elaborate uh, today. And then the fourth is that how we will plan this study on the Pauline epistles. Uh, we will have a, a roadmap as to how this study would progress so that we can expect uh, on every each day uh, what all things we will be studying. And then the fifth is uh, if the time permits, I would like to look at as to why we should study these Pauline epistles. These are the five aspects I'm trying to cover uh, today. Um, we have uh, the New Testament books, 27 books, mainly divided into three, uh, three divisions. The first is the historical section. We know from the uh, Gospel of Matthew to uh, Acts, uh, it is historical section in which uh, the history of, uh, I shall share the screen so that uh, some of these things will be uh, easy for you to uh, look at. Now we should be able to do it. So here uh, you can see that uh, Matthew to Acts, uh, we have the uh, uh, we have the historical books, and then from Romans to Jude, we have the epistles. Um, now, uh, the first portion that is from uh, Romans to Philemon is actually known as the Pauline epistles, and this is the portion that we are going to study. And then the second part in epistles is the general epistles from Hebrew to Jude. And then the third portion that is Apocalypse, that is the book of Revelation. So this is the major three divisions of the uh, New Testament. Now, um, we will look at the uh, geographical locations. Um, Um, now, this is the, actually the red line, what you see here is the, uh, the route in which Paul traveled during the third missionary journey. Now, I would like to uh, show you the important uh, areas uh, where, um, uh, which are mentioned in the... You can see here Jerusalem, and then uh, you can make a note of this place, Antioch, and then uh, Cilicia, and Cilicia, we have the Tarsus, which is the birthplace of uh, uh, Paul, and then uh, this, this region is called Galatia, and we, you can see some of the places like uh, there is one Antioch in Syria, and also another Antioch in Pisidia. 
and this is known as Antioch Pisidia, Pisidian Antioch. And then uh, we have the other, uh, this area in the present world, it is uh, Turkey. Um, in the olden days, it used to be known as the Asia Minor. So uh, we have the cities like uh, uh, Ephesus, uh, then um, uh, Smyrna, then uh, Colossia. All these places are located in this, uh, uh, in this region. And this is the area mainly Paul covered during the first missionary journey. And then uh, when we move towards the uh, west, uh, here we have the uh, city of Philippi, and here we have the city of Thessalonica, and here we have the city of Corinth. Now, these are the uh, places which uh, Paul covered uh, during the second missionary journey and also in the third missionary journey. So now, um, these are the major places which we should be familiar with when we study the uh, Pauline epistles. Um, now, uh, now uh, when we uh, think of the voyage to Rome, it is not shown here, it is further west. Uh, I'll show that in the uh, other map. Um, now, um, so uh, this, this map covers most of the places which uh, Paul had uh, traveled and um, uh, had written epistles to these uh, uh, churches at these places. Uh, in the epistle to Galatia, Galatia, we see the churches at Galatia, which means he was referring to, uh, addressing to many churches in that region, which had uh, many false, uh, some false doctrines, which Paul wanted to correct. Um, and um, so this, uh, during the uh, time of uh, Antioch, Epiphanes, uh, Antiochus IV, uh, he uh, allowed the Jewish, uh, Jewish people to settle in the uh, region of Cilicia. So uh, Paul's uh, forefathers, uh, somewhere in BC 170, they shifted to this place, must be from uh, Galilee, and uh, Paul was born here. Paul's father, uh, in all probability, uh, was a master ten maker. Um, we will see the uh, next map that uh, shows the um, voyage to Rome. Uh, here, you can see uh, that um, so from Caesarea, he went by ship to, uh, you can see the route, uh, Crete, and then he went to uh, Malta, and then uh, this is the route by which he went to Rome. And he was imprisoned in Rome. Uh, we had seen this region in the previous map in which uh, uh, Corinth uh, is located here, Thessalonica here, and uh, Philippi here, and the other uh, Asian, uh, my Asia Minor cities here. So this is the, with reference to the previous map. So now, uh, we will uh, look at the uh, life of uh, Apostle uh, Paul. Um, as I mentioned, Paul was born uh, in Tarsus. Um, the, uh, in fact, the birth of Jesus Christ uh, must be in uh, BC 4. BC 4, Jesus was born. And B, in, in, in AD 1, that is after about five years, Paul was born in uh, Tarsus. Now, um, Paul uh, being born in an in a, uh, Orthodox Jewish family, uh, they did not have any association or any, uh, any friendship with the uh, local people uh, who were uh, mainly of uh, other uh, descent. Now, Paul, uh, Paul's father uh, was a wealthy man and he was an Orthodox Jew. And so, according to the normal practice, he was trained uh, in the law. In the synagogue, uh, for, until the age of 13, 
uh, he was taught all the uh, basic uh, Jewish history and then the, from the scripture, he must have become a, an expert in the uh, law and in the Psalms and in the uh, prophecies or he must have studied all these and must have become an expert uh, by the age of 40. And in all probability at the age of 14, he went to Jerusalem to study at the feet of uh, Gamaliel. Now, uh, about six years, he must have studied in, um, uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, and he must have become an expert in the law so that when he came back to uh, Tarsus, he will be able to teach in the uh, synagogue. Um, we find that um, uh, during this time, uh, the main language he must have familiarized is uh, uh, one is the, the Greek and then uh, Latin and also Aramic. Aramic is the language, uh, a variation of Hebrew, which the Jewish people normally talked at their uh, home. So uh, this must be the language with, the, with which uh, Paul must have familiarized. And also, uh, we don't find any mention about Paul's mother. We don't know, probably in his uh, infancy, she passed away. We don't know the details, but we find that he had one sister because we find a reference to his nephew in the book of uh, Acts. And um, he, uh, he, he mastered and, uh, in the law and the aspiration of a brilliant Jewish boy is to become a ruler of Jew. Uh, there was a body of Sanhedrin of 71 uh, members who will be experts in the law and uh, some of them will be uh, hereditary in the lineage of uh, uh, Aaron and also uh, some others uh, will be the um, they will be the judges and the senators and the uh, spiritual masters in the uh, law. So these people, 71 of them, they were known as the rulers of uh, Jew. So uh, his aspiration must have been to become a, a Jew. So he was trained in the law at the feet of Gamaliel and then uh, he must have come back to uh, Tarsus. And in Tarsus, in all probability, um, he must have helped his father in the business, and then uh, he must have got married, and uh, because it is a qualification required, eligibility required to become a, a member of the Sanhedrin. So after his uh, marriage, probably with a child, he must have gone back to uh, Jerusalem. And when on his way back, probably there must have been a tragedy in which uh, he must have lost both his wife and his child. This is likely because uh, when he uh, instructs the, uh, uh, the family life and about the family life, we find that he has a very good knowledge of the family life. So uh, it must be, uh, we, can, we can assume that he was a married man and also he must have had a child and um, because these were qualifications to become a, a member of Sanhedrin. So when he came back to Jerusalem, uh, he must have also heard about the, uh, the uh, life of Jesus and the influence that he had on the people. And uh, uh, consequently, uh, he must have understood that it is necessary to oppose this faith. And we find that he had the authority letter from the uh, Jews to uh, persecute these uh, Jews. And during that stay in uh, Jerusalem, he had the encounter uh, with uh, Stephen. And Stephen, as we know, uh, was such a, uh, such a brilliant man. We read about uh, Stephen in the uh, book of Acts, in uh, chapter 6, verse 10, we read, and not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So this means that uh, Stephen was not an ordinary man. Probably he was a good match for Paul. But we find that um, in the subsequent verses uh, and in, the, in, in chapter 7, uh, Stephen's argument against, uh, uh, against uh, the uh, Jewish system and uh, how he proved to them uh, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and, uh, and uh, uh, how he defended himself. And all this uh, Paul definitely witnessed. It seems the practice used to be if a person should be stoned to death, the people who accuse them will be rushing first to stone the, uh, the person. And uh, those who come in this manner, they would leave these clothes and they will come uh, with all rage towards the person who should be stoned. So probably 
uh, those men who were uh, going first to stone Apostle uh, Stephen, uh, they must have left their clothes uh, with uh, Saul. But that's what we can understand. Uh, Paul's uh, full name we do not know. The first name, the Jewish name, um, was uh, Saul, and his uh, last name, uh, the Latin name, that is uh, Paulus, P A U L L U S. So uh, he must have had a middle name according to the practice, but we are not aware of this name. So Saul Paulus was a person who was so uh, enthusiastic and committed to the Jewish religion, uh, he was willing to. Uh, he was willing to uh, stone uh, Stephen to death. And then we find that uh, this dramatic event when he was going to uh, Antioch uh, and at Damascus, he had the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, then uh, we find that uh, he went to Tarsus. And then uh, uh, we find that um, uh, after going to uh, Antioch, in uh, to um, to in order to persecute uh, the believers at Damascus when he had the appearance of the Lord uh, for about three years we find that uh, uh, he was uh, he was uh, uh, he was in, in the silent years in Araba and uh, during that time uh, he must have had the close intimate fellowship with the Lord uh, which was which must have led him uh, in the remaining uh, life of Apostle Paul. Um, now, then we find that uh, in Antioch, he was in the ministry uh, for quite some time. Uh, and during that ministry is the time when uh, the Lord uh, guided uh, them to go for the first missionary journey. And uh, from AD 44 to 47, uh, they went on the first missionary journey. And we know that he covered the uh, area of the present Turkey during the first missionary journey. And then uh, the, uh, the council at uh, uh, Jerusalem took place. We read about this in Acts chapter 15. Uh, and then after that, uh, he again went back to Antioch. He was in Antioch for some time. And then uh, after that, he went on the second missionary journey. Uh, the, these missionary journeys, as we remembered earlier, all started from Antioch and ended at Antioch, except the third one. And uh, after the second missionary journey, he came to Antioch, and then after that, again, he uh, went on the third missionary journey. Um, third missionary journey. Now, after the third missionary journey, when he was planning to go to Antioch, we know that he came to Jerusalem and uh, there uh, Jewish uh, attacked them. And then uh, he uh, went into the, uh, he was imprisoned and he underwent the trial and then he went to Rome. This is the, uh, uh, now after the uh, imprisonment for two years in uh, Rome, he was released from the prison and then uh, he was, um, uh, he was, uh, he must have traveled. We don't have the details of that ministry, but then uh, during that time, he uh, wrote two epistles that the epistle to Timothy, first the epistle, and then the epistle to Titus. And then he had the second imprisonment. And second imprisonment was a much more severe one. And we find that uh, after the second imprisonment, during the time of Nero, uh, he was executed. It is um, believed generally that Paul and Peter were uh, together uh, executed on the uh, 27th of June, uh, AD 67. Um, and uh, it is told that uh, probably uh, Peter was uh, crucified with his head down and uh, Paul was beheaded. Uh, this is the brief uh, life uh, of Apostle Paul, uh, not only from the scripture, but also uh, from the other uh, extra biblical uh, sources. Now, uh, we will look at the uh, plan for, uh, uh, I, I, now I shall introduce the epistles in relation to Paul's life. So do, after the first missionary journey, the major uh, challenge that came up was that the uh, Jewish uh, teachers they were teaching the believers that circumcision is necessary and following the law is necessary for salvation. And it was essential to 
defend the uh, false teaching. Um, so Paul addresses this issue in the epistle to Galatians. Uh, we will have a deeper and wider understanding on this subject uh, about the authorship of Apostle Paul and the time of his writing and also uh, the content in that epistle. And it is very important while studying the Pauline epistles to understand the context in which each of them was written because uh, the, uh, the meaning of the verses in the epistles uh, give altogether different understanding when we know the context in which uh, each of these epistles were uh, written. Now, during the second missionary journey, Apostle uh, went to uh, Philippi and then to uh, Thessalonica, and uh, then he was forced to leave Thessalonica, and that is the time uh, he wrote uh, these two epistles, uh, first epistle to Thessalonians, and, the, and after the first epistle, he understood that some of the teachings in the first epistles were not clear to the Thessalonian believers. Was therefore, within a few months, he wrote uh, probably the second epistles, epistle. So these are the two epistles that he wrote uh, uh, during the second missionary journey. And in the third missionary journey, uh, Apostle uh, went to, uh, in the second missionary journey, he went to uh, Corinth. And in the third missionary journey, he wrote uh, these two epistles to uh, Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians and Second Corinthians. Before these, be, be, between writing these two epistles, probably he must have written the epistles to the Romans. Uh, in the Corinthian epistles, uh, actually there were errors in um, uh, Corinth, and uh, some of the believers from Corinth had visited Apostle Paul, and he had informed they had informed him about. Um, the errors there, and he's addressing them. And also the Corinthian believers are asked some questions to Apostle Paul. He is addressing uh, those uh, issues in the first epistle. And the second epistle, uh, he had promised to visit them and he is justifying as to why he did not visit them. And he's also establishing his apostolic authority in the second epistle. And between these two epistles, he must have written the epistle to Romans. Romans actually, uh, there was no any uh, specific reason to address these Roman believers, but Paul is writing the uh, basic fundamental doctrines of uh, um, Christian faith, uh, expounding all of them systematically uh, in the Epistle of Romans. So the study of the Epistle of Romans gives us very good understanding of the basic teachings of uh, uh, Christianity. So that is the background of writing the Epistle to Romans. Uh, Paul had not visited Rome and he desired to visit Rome, but as we know, he first visited Rome uh, as a prisoner. Uh, that is what we read uh, in uh, Acts chapter 28. And then uh, during the first imprisonment, uh, he wrote these four epistles. Probably these are the years uh, in which he wrote Ephesians in uh, AD 60 and Philippians in uh, AD 63, Colossians in uh, AD 60 and Philemon in AD 60. So uh, these epistles also are addressing specific back, uh, situation in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the churches uh, during those days. And also this uh, Philemon, as we know, uh, asking Philemon to accept uh, Onesimus as a uh, child of God. He is uh, writing the epistle to Philemon. And before the imprisonment, when he was freed from the prison, uh, before the second imprisonment, uh, when he was freed from the prison, we find that uh, he wrote these two epistles. These three epistles, that is first and second Timothy and Titus, these are known as the pastoral epistles. There are very valuable advices and instruction for the elders in these uh, epistles. Uh, and we find that the first uh, Timothy and Titus uh, were written uh, during the uh, time of his, uh, his freedom after the first imprisonment. And we find that uh, there is a general understanding that probably Titus was brother of uh, Luke. It is amazing that when uh, Acts is written, uh, Luke never refers to Titus, uh, probably maybe because he doesn't want to uh, show forth his brother as a prominent person. But Titus was very active in the ministry, and we can see that from the epistle written to uh, Titus. And now, uh, after uh, these two epistles, then we know that Paul was imprisoned in, in uh, Rome, and that imprisonment was much more severe than the first one. Um, and the kind of uh, troubles that he must have had is uh, unimaginable uh, for us in the, in the present day uh, prisons. So there, 
uh, he suffered and then uh, before the death of uh, nero uh, he executed uh, paul and that is uh, before that just before that he wrote the uh, the second epistle to timothy now now we will look at the plan for our study Uh, on the next uh, session in the next session we will uh, study the first missionary journey and the conference at jerusalem because this is the background for writing the epistle to galatians so god willing in the next session we will be studying the first missionary journey and the conference at jerusalem in the subsequent se session we will have the overview of the uh, book of galatians uh, we will uh, see the uh, the the criticism against uh, uh, paul's authorship and also the time of uh, writing the epistle and then the background and the general content of the epistle all this we will try to cover in the overview of uh, book of uh, galatians the epistle to galatians and then the third uh, session we will have the uh, detailed study of the second missionary journey uh, we will go into the map and we understand the various events during the missionary journey and the lessons that we can learn uh, from this uh, missionary journey and then in the uh, subsequent uh, two sessions we will have the uh, the overview of uh, first thessalonians and then the overview of the uh, second thessalonians and in the sixth session we will have the missionary journey at uh, the third missionary journey uh, we will see the map again and we'll go into the details of uh, uh, each location and the ministry that uh, paul accomplished during the missionary journey and there also there are various spiritual lessons that we can learn uh, from those events recorded in the scripture now then subsequently we will have the first corinthians second corinthians uh, romans i have not mentioned here romans so those three uh, epistles we will have the overview uh, in each session and then uh, we have the we will have the uh, uh, the uh, paul's voyage to rome and the imprisonment in rome uh, we can see many truths in relation to this journey also and also uh, about the imprisonment in rome we will uh, study those things and then we will have the uh, overview of the um, the uh, four uh, prison epistles and then the, uh, the the pastoral epistles this is how we will try to uh, proceed in the study uh, now this will cover about uh, 17 uh, sessions uh, god willing uh, we will uh, we will study each epistle in detail uh, subsequent to uh, this uh, study now i would like to quickly look at uh, the the importance and the uh, the necessity to uh, study the epistle to Uh, uh pauline uh, epistles now we know that um, as i had mentioned uh, in the um, i had as i had mentioned in the uh, in the inaugural session uh, this concept of pauline epistles it is not actually uh, uh, um, uh, you know the students uh, concept but it's something that is introduced by the holy spirit through apostle peter and i read those verses i read read those verses uh, once again second uh, peter uh, chapter 3 verses uh, 15 to 17 here um, peter is mentioning about the long suffering of god uh, with regard to the uh, unbelievers especially and then uh, he is uh, mentioning these things shall we turn to second uh, peter uh, chapter 3 verse 15 second uh, peter chapter 3 verse 15 and account that long suffering uh, of our lord is salvation even as 
our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they had, uh, they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, are seeing, ye know these things uh, before, uh, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Now, in these verses, we find five reasons as to why we should uh, study the uh, Pauline uh, epistles. The first thing is that it is written according to the wisdom that God gave to Paul. Now, one thing that we notice in this Pauline epistles is about the paradoxes and the mysteries. A paradox is something which doesn't make sense. For instance, Trinity of God. This is something that doesn't make sense. How can one being be in three personhood? But that is a reality, that is a truth. There are many paradoxes. For instance, I'll tell you, uh, you know, prayer. We all enjoy praying and we would like to spend our time in prayer in fellowship with God. But think about it. When we pray, in fact, God has his own will and he knows what is going to happen and he will not change his will according to our prayer, but we will yield to his will after praying. But then why do we pray? But this is a big, big paradox when you think about it. But this is a reality that the children of God enjoy spending time in prayer, especially in secret. And they, uh, they would like to spend their time in prayer. So this prayerful attitude is a reality, but it's a paradox. Now, when we turn to uh, Romans, we find in Romans chapter 9, Paul is uh, explaining about the election. But when we come into chapter 10, we find about the faith and confession to accept the Lord as their savior. Now, how did these two go together? What I'm trying to say is there are many paradoxes and mysteries in the Pauline apostles, uh, epistles, which actually is very illuminating. And it is given by God because of the wisdom that God gave to Paul. That is what uh, Peter is emphasizing here. And Peter refers to all epistles. So probably he had opportunity to read all the epistles written by Paul, and he was unable to understand in a single attempt everything. So that must be the reason Paul is, uh, Peter is writing in this manner about the Pauline epistles. Now, the second thing that we find is, uh, Peter says here, these Pauline epistles are a group of epistles. Those are considered with same authority and authenticity of the Old Testament scripture. Now we know that during the first century, when uh, apostles referred to scripture, they were referring to the Old Testament scripture. Now the, the, the authority with which they refer to the Old Testament scripture, we can clearly understand from the way the Lord quoted from the scripture and the apostles quoted from the scripture. Now Paul is say, Peter is saying, that the scripture, the epistles written by Apostle Paul have the same authority as the Old Testament. This is something amazing and it should encourage us to study these Pauline epistles. Now there are, the third thing that Paul, Peter says is, there are things that are hard to understand. Uh, this is another thing that, as I told you about the paradoxes and the mysteries, these are things which are in the, uh, in the counsel of God, in, in, in his eternal counsel, the things which he did not reveal in earlier times and now being revealed. And these are things with, with the human mind and understanding, one cannot understand and grasp. So Paul, Peter says, there are things which are hard to understand. So if there are things which are hard to understand, unless we study uh, with uh, determination to understand, we will not be able to understand. So therefore, this is the third reason that we should study the Pauline epistles. And then the fourth reason what we find here is unlearned and unstable misinterpret these epistles. And uh, as a result, what happens is they lose their reward and they, uh, they do not receive the benefit of this teaching. 
So this is a, this is a fourth reason uh, because we come across many false teachers and false doctrines in these days. And unless we are thoroughly uh, taught in these epistles and we do not know these teachings, we will not be able to withstand them. And people try to uh, misinterpret and distort or twist uh, these teachings in Pauline epistles. So therefore, it's very important for us to uh, learn this and uh, uh, so that we can defend the true doctrine in the scripture. And the fifth reason is that Peter says that we should be beware if we are not understanding these doctrines in the right manner, there is possibility that we may be misled. And as a result, uh, Paul say, Peter says that um, um, uh, fall from your own steadfastness. Meaning, the, the, the reality of every true child of God is steadfastness. He may, he may have failures, he may uh, commit sin, and he may uh, have many failures in his life, but one thing is there, he will be steadfast unto the end. Now here, what Paul says is, if we are not taught in these uh, basic teachings, there is a possibility that we may become unstable, and as a result, we may lose our reward, and we may not be useful to God in our life. So therefore, it is very important for us to learn these Pauline epistles so that we will be steadfast unto the end. So these are the five reasons that I would like to point out that we should be diligent and keen to learn these epistles. I'll repeat once again. One, it is written according to the wisdom that God gave to Paul, and therefore it is worthwhile for us to understand and uh, uh, have a, a clear uh, knowledge about the Pauline epistles. The second reason is that Apostle uh, Peter considered these Pauline epistles as inspired scripture. Uh, so therefore, uh, it is important for us to understand what God has revealed through these uh, uh, writings of Apostle Paul. And the third reason that we found is that there are things which are hard to understand unless we are diligent and careful to put effort to understand, we will not understand. Therefore, we should be diligent to study. And the fourth reason is unlearned and unstable people they, uh, they misinterpret the scripture. So unless we are taught in this, we will not be able to understand correctly. And the fifth reason is that we should be, uh, we should be beware that we may be misled uh, in the teachings and that may result that we will not be steadfast and useful and profitable to uh, people of God in the days to come. Therefore, it is important for us to learn that we may not lose our reward and we will be useful to God. So may the Lord help us that in the days to come, as we progress in our studies, it will be uh, profitable for all of us and for the glory of God, and it will bring blessing to all of us. May God's name be glorified. May we praise God for uh, enabling Brother Paulson to present the subject today uh, in a wonderful and a blessed manner. Uh, it is truly a joy to to listen to God's word and God has been giving us the needed wisdom from above and uh, we maybe look forward for the coming days that the Lord may continue to speak to us uh, through his word and may he enable his uh, servants to be able to uh, rightly divide his word. Thank you, Brother Paulson, and may God use you mightily more for his glory in the days to come. And uh, may the thoughts shared today be a blessing for each one of us and uh, in, especially in the days ahead that we may live according to uh, his word that is revealed to us and maybe live a life that is worthy of God's name. A few announcements before uh, we close the session in prayer. Please note our uh, sessions for the coming days. Uh, today we, we, had the, we had the session on the Pauline epistles. Tomorrow, please remember that our uh, uh, sessions will start at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Tomorrow, the sessions will be at 9 p.m. Uh, IST. And uh, following that, on the 8th, again, we will uh, have our sessions at 7 o'clock in the morning, 7 a.m. IST, and uh, 9th also at 7 a.m. IST. And on, on the weekend, Saturday, 
10th of October, we will have uh, again at uh, 9 p.m. IST. So please note these sessions and uh, um, uh, enable, may God enable each one of us to be present on time. And uh, these sessions are also uh, being distributed on the flyers and the details are available there. Uh, please uh, also remember the, uh, the, uh, the TERC website is also live and the address can be seen on the screen. And uh, let us pray that the Lord will continue to use this ministry for his glory. And um, may we praise and thank God for all the wonderful ways in which he's leading us and providing for us. And uh, please um, also remember that the Zoom ID and the password will remain the same for all sessions. And uh, we will uh, now look to the Lord in prayer as we close this session. And um, may I request uh, Dr. Devash Sahim to close this session in prayer today. Thing is muted. Good morning about the following epistles to our dear brother Orson. Thank you for all the participants. Bless them all. Let them be unified in their faith and their vision and mission. We pray for the burden laid on the hearts of our elderly people to teach the right word of God in right time to the believers. Thank you, Lord, for thy grace granted to us to participate in this session. And we pray for all the faculty members. Fill them with thy spirit and with thy word so that they can rightly divide the word of God and teach to us. And for many young people are participating. Bless them all abundantly. And make them useful and prepared for the coming days. Thank you, Lord, for this day and the word of God revealed to us out of thy grace. Thank you for answering our prayers because we ask these things in the most beloved name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.